Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. Or I'm my alter ego, Miss Vanity Scarlet, in the look that you guys voted for on my recent poll over on Instagram. So we're going to dive into Word of Honor. We're diving into episode 12. And this is a special version, as a number of you guys have alluded, that I need to make sure I watch the special version of episode 12. So that's what we're going to do. Um, 11. Um, lots of things happen. Lots of things happen, but I feel like that's the same with every other episode. Um, but basically, where we left off, um, Chang Ling was getting kidnapped by the Scorpions um, because they want to torture him for the information or for the location of the glazed armor. And Zishu saw him getting kidnapped so then he flew into action and went to try and rescue him and then Qi Jing also saw him getting kidnapped and he went to try and find him but he ran into some of the other scorpions and took them out so then once Qi Jing finally found where the two lady scorpions were who were torturing um Chang Ling um he bust up in the building and he saw that Zishu was hurt He's like, uh uh, that, mm mm mm. mm. He, he was crazy the whole first half of the episode, and now he's like, all right, let, let me get back to protecting my baby. So he flew in there with a bench, and he's like, I, I will make anyone pay who dares hurt my baby. I'm like, girl, you better get yours. Get yours, girl. Um, so, needless to say, they escaped, although we did get another appearance from the Scorpion King. His just deliciousness. Um, and. We got some honesty by the campfire. We got some backstory. Um, Zishu finally um, gave his identity of who he was. He told Cheng Ling and um, Qi Jing. And he agreed to take Cheng Ling under his wing and be his master and train him. Um, and that whole campfire scene was so fucking adorable, I tell you guys. It was so adorable the way that Cheng Ling was just sitting there in between the two of them, like, okay. My dads are fighting, so let me be the middleman and get my dads happy again. Like, oh, what did you do to him? Did you, have you tried to go go hug him? Go go love on him. It, it's it's okay. I'm here to support you. I'm like, you better support your two daddies. I, I, I love it. I love the family dynamic. Um, yeah, that was pretty much where we left off. So we're just gonna dive in and see where this episode takes us. Okay, so super duper cute, super duper duper cute. Um, yes, just like with, um, I think it was episode six, the first one that you guys told me, oh, watch the special version, watch the special version, because there's extra cute scenes with um, um, Kijing and um, Zushi. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute, y'all. It's, it's, it's super duper cute. Um, it, it's just super cute. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. The first little scene we had them with them by the water and the moonlight. And he's sitting there talking about, um, my master told me what bravery was. And he's describing all this other kind of stuff. And he's like, you know what? I know you. You're the person I know. And he, he, he just kept talking, and he punches him in the arm, like, mm -hmm, yeah, there we go, friend, brother, mm -hmm, whatever. I'm like, y'all, it's it, it's not even reading between the lines. It's not even, like, subtext. I have, like, the text is there. It, it's not even subtext. You gotta read between the lines and try and figure out, okay, yes, they, there's some attraction. Like, no, it is very blatant in my face. So if the only thing that is chain, that is separating a series from being... A BL series versus a gay drama versus a bromance series that y'all keep saying is the fact that they're not overtly out here talking about I love you and shoving tongues down each other's throats. I'm like, that that is such a minor part of it. It's such a minor part of it. Because every other part of the relationship is there. Every other aspect of this relationship is there. They are 
the romance is there, the sweet talk is there, the flirting is there, the attraction, the chemistry, all of that is there. The only thing we're not seeing is the overt, in your face, let me shove my tongue down your throat, let's get naked and feel each other up. Which, again, I will gladly watch. Don't get me wrong, like, if there's a special director's cut somewhere with all of that stuff in there, I will gladly watch it for the sake of science. We're scientists on this channel, of course. But, like, without that, I still see everything. And if, hell, it's actually more romantic than some of the other series that I have watched that have that sort of overt nature. I feel like I said similar things when I was reacting to Advance Bravely. Like, just because we're not getting that overt sexual tension and whatnot doesn't mean that the romance isn't there. The romance is there in spades. The way they talk to each other, the way they talk about each other, the way that they interact with one another, the way that they just traverse the world differently when they're together versus when they're apart. It's like, it's, it's obvious. It is so obvious. So the fact that, you know, they had to play down some of the romance aspects for just for the sake of censorships in China and the way, you know, for the sake of getting this on TV. I'm like, if this is the toned down version, what were they doing in the original source material? Like, were, were, were they just like in the middle of bathhouses and whatnot doing all kind of, like, what? Because like, I, I, I get the relationship loud and clear. I see it loud and clear. And like I said, it, a lot of it is far more romantic and passionate and intense than some of those other series I've reacted to where they were just diving into the sexy time all willy nilly and just showing me all the skin and this, that, and the other. So like, yeah, no. We're going to continue on this bromance my ass train all the way through the end of episode 36, 37, how many damn episodes this is. And I'm sure once I get into the untamed, whenever I get around to it, it'll, it'll definitely be after I finish this because I can't keep track of two of these kind of series. It, it, there's just so much information in this one. So like I can, two of them at the same time would just kill my brain. But whenever I get around to the untamed, I'm sure it's probably going to be the same thing. I'm going to be screaming bromance my ass probably like every other episode. So, but yeah super duper cute moment when they were in town drinking wine and Xi Jing just keeps repeating his name Aju what Aju what Aju bitch what Aju I swear to god if you don't stop saying my name don't you just love the sunshine and the drinking wine and isn't just a good good day now when Hmm. Now when? Yes. And now I'm like, y'all better stop. Y'all better stop with this cute shit. Y'all better. St I mean, don't stop. Please keep it coming. It's fucking adorable. And then to go straight from that into Ching Ling slicing his belly open and whipping out this glazed armor. Uh, granted, they didn't show me anything, but like I got the idea of what was happening. I'm like, well, this is a stark contrast, and this is not the romantic follow-up to the romantic moment that I needed right now. But okay, snap us back into the reality we're living in. Um, so now, he's no longer in possession of the glazed armor, which I'd, I would imagine would alleviate some of the pressure that he was getting from his uncle, the fifth brother, chief guy, whatever. Um, but at the same time, it seems as though he still wants his daughter to marry him. Um, and she's, obviously she's not into it, but she's doing it for the sake of her duty as as the chief's daughter. I'm um, in uniting the, the, the different sects. So maybe he still has some interest in keeping Chingling around, I guess. Although he now he has glazed armor, he, he probably doesn't care as much, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We got some backstory, some more backstory on how the glazed armor came to be. Um, that was a little different from the story Chingling was telling us last episode. And Chingling was like, how come that's different from the story I, was, I heard? I'm like, mm -hmm, yes, girl. Whoever was telling you the story was telling you one part of the story. They're telling you a very favorable the very favorable version of the story that, you know, makes them look good. Mm. But this is the version that the, the rest of the world knows. Um, and like I said, in that flashback, one of the guys who I think was one of the five brothers um, of the, you know, Five Lakes Alliance 
it looked like I'm trying to scrub through the episode to see if I can get to that part again and see but it looked as though he was one of the he looked as though it was the same it, the same actor who played Zush, Zushu's um master sorry just kind of scrubbing through here y'all can watch with me Is that one of the brothers? I don't know. But maybe that is that the same person? That might not be now that I'm getting another look at him. I, I might have invented that. I don't know. He had his hair up and he was wearing a similar color palette in his outfit, so I, I assume they were the same person. They might not be. Or who knows? Maybe they are. I don't know. Um, if they are, okay, that makes an interesting little connection. If they're not, then okay, just forget everything I just said. Um, but yeah, we got some more backstory for the glazed armor. Um, sweet boy, um, cow, I believe, um, saved Jiang because chief guy was sitting here like he was grilling her and she's like not answering she's giving all these evasive answers which i'm like okay baby this is making you look a little bit more guilty than if you just said that i was out partying or something um so he stepped in like okay i know chief's gonna come at her so yeah she was with me all damn night i'm like okay and i was like boy i knew you liked her but i didn't know oh okay okay Okay, go ahead, boy. I'm mad at you. Um, so, saved her life with that, you know, little fabrication. But we've seen as the episode kind of went on, when she was talking to herself after she left Cheng Ling and she had all the like salves and whatnot to help her injury, um, she he popped into her head first, and she's been thinking about him, and obviously he's been thinking about her. And, you know, he went to check on her, but she wasn't there the night before with the whole, you know, kidnapping and whatnot. So it's like, okay, we go ahead and build this little romantic relationship. It's cute. And then that last little scene there where um, he showed up at the restaurant and the battle between the two daddies. One of them clearly is like, you stay away from my daughter. My daughter's going to, and the other one's like, Hey, didn't we, weren't we just talking about how we need someone to watch out for her because it's not convenient for her to be with us all the time because she's a lady person. Not that that means a damn thing because obviously we know that she's more than capable. So those aren't actually his feelings, but he's obviously trying to get Qi Jing to back up and let the girl have some sort of love life. Give her a chance. He's trying to throw her a bone, do her a little favor. Um, so cute interactions there. anything else important I think that's the maturity of I think that was the maturity of like the major plot points everything else was just really really cute moments again just the two of them talking very openly about um, just each other being each other's soulmates and spending time with their soulmates doing whatever, drinking, taking in the sun, going to the countryside, traveling the world, this, that, and the other. I'm like, y'all, y'all too damn cute. Y'all too damn adorable, and I love it. I love it. I love to see it. So, yeah, that was episode 12. Just a big old ball of cuteness. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction as much as I enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications to be notified when all my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. And before you guys go, a shout out to my amazing patrons. I can't begin to express how thankful I am for your support. And if you guys would like to join us over on Patreon, the link is down in the description. I love you guys.